Hey guys, welcome to the Tuesday Tune. My name's Steve, I'm Vorsprung up here in Whistler. For those of you who haven't been watching the early videos, uh, Tuesday Tune is a short video series about the ins and outs of mountain bike suspension. This week, we're gonna take a look at high and low speed adjusters for your damper. Uh, these are typically found as high and low speed compression adjusters, although there are a few items out there that have high and low speed rebound as well. So we're gonna have a look at the way that the adjusters function, first and foremost, the physical function of them, uh, what that translates into in a mathematical sense and what that translates into in the riding and adjustment sense. Boom. So what we have here is a uh, high and low speed adjuster assembly uh, out of a Cane Creek rear shock. So this separates into the low speed adjuster assembly, which is, if you can see that, oil flowing in through this tiny little hole in the end. There's a little needle inside that you probably not quite make out through those side holes. That little needle blocks off uh, the flow of oil coming through there. So when you adjust your low speed compression damping or rebound damping, uh, by winding this inside uh, little nut in, that adjusts the needle uh, and how much it restricts the flow of oil through there. On top of that, we have this poppet assembly here. So this, as you can see there, can move up and down. And the way that that works is you have a valve seat here. So on the back side of this valve seat is a check valve uh, that prevents oil flowing through in the opposite direction. Oh, it allows oil to flow through in the opposite direction, I beg your pardon, prevents it flowing through uh, anything other than the controlled circuit here. So when you adjust your high speed uh, damping, what this does is it winds in, compresses that coil uh, further and further and applies more load to this little poppet uh, that is holding shut against that big central hole there. So this is a very visual demonstration of uh, what is quite a universal principle in a sense. Uh, almost all high speed adjusters out there function by preloading some sort of element, whether that be a poppet valve or holding a shimmer stack closed. Uh, the reason that they do that is it's the simplest way to offset your high speed damping curve. Right, so we're going to have a quick look at characteristic curves that we get from various damper settings and configurations. Let's first of all assume that we have a fairly uh, high performance damper that's using shim valves or pop valves. So, most high performance damping curves, particularly compression, will be something digressive. And that means that they are steep in the low speed and then that curve becomes less steep later on. And so, this area here, let's call this, you know, this area here is low speed and everything above it basically is high speed. Now, this velocity here is not super well defined uh, mathematically. There's, no, there's nothing that says this is low speed and this is high speed. In reality, there's speeds that are low enough that we consider them low speeds, speeds that are high enough that we say they're high speed. So, if you decrease uh, your low speed compression damping by usually winding it counterclockwise, that will open up the amount of area that oil has to flow through. It decreases the resistance, uh, the amount of damping force drops. And so then, we'll have something like that. Now, if we have a preloaded element, like that pop valve I just showed you, or a preloaded shim stack, then at some pressure here, so force is directly proportional to pressure uh, over the valve, in most cases. <laughs> At this uh, opening pressure here, and this will digress once again into something that is uh, basically parallel to what we had there. Now, depending on the amount of high speed flow and how suddenly it opens up, um, uh, how much flow area there becomes once the high speed valve is open, these two curves can basically be in the same place. And so you can have something where this curve will basically just merge into that one uh, because the difference in available flow area for the oil to pass through uh, proportionally up here is tiny according to the low speed setting. When we increase the high speed damping by turning our adjuster, the high speed adjuster clockwise usually, what that will do is applies more preload to that spring. 
And that means the amount of pressure required to overcome that preload and open the valve and allow any oil through the high-speed circuit increases. So that means if you bring this uh, opening pressure up. So what that means is that this low-speed curve continues on at its existing gradient, or you know that's often a variable gradient because low-speed flow will often be through a fixed size aperture, like a, a variable, well, variable, an adjustable size port. So often you'll have something that is actually quadratic here, and that will continue on until you reach that pressure. Once that opens, then we end up with the same or very similar high-speed gradient. So increasing the preload basically offsets this curve. What that means uh, is that we can separate where this curve sits and how much damping we have, say, at this velocity from how much damping we have, say, at that velocity. Using the low speed adjuster, we can make this steeper. Again, it will get to that uh, threshold there, that force, and then open up. Uh, or, you know, how far up. If you close it right off, then basically there's no flow through the low speed circuit. Everything has to go through a circuit that is held shut by a certain amount of preload. Then nothing happens until you reach this force. And that is a pedaling platform. So then you only have flow through the high speed circuit. Depending on, again, the proportion of your low speed flow area to your high speed flow area and how much uh, additional flow area is opened up when the high speed circuit opens, uh, that gradient, the gradient of the high speed elements of the curve may or may not be affected substantially by the low speed adjustment. In some cases, it is. The cases that that is most common are with your rebound damping. And so, most rebound curves can be approximated as something like linear. And so that means you have a curve, something like that. Now when you adjust the rebound adjuster on most shocks, if you have say a Fox uh, float or you know an RC4 or something along those lines, anything that only has a single rebound adjuster. When you adjust the rebound, there's usually not a preloaded element uh, in there in the case of coil shocks like that, sometimes there is, but not usually. Um, what will happen is that it will affect the whole curve. So you'll end up with something like that. Now, although it is built in the same way as a low speed adjuster, because the total flow area for oil to pass through is substantially affected there, it's substantially reduced at all speeds, um, because we haven't had a, a circuit suddenly open up and allow you know, a much, much larger area. Uh, then we have effectively something like a linear adjuster. So then we get a fairly linear curve at all speeds up until you know, the flow becomes limited by the size of the ports. Um, and then your adjuster is effective over the whole range. So when we talk about a rebound adjuster and uh, rear shock quite commonly being, or you know most forks really, uh, being a low speed adjuster, it is a low speed adjuster in that it affects the low speed, but the way that they're configured is such that it affects all speeds to some degree. So what's the real world effect of this and when should we be using the low and the high speed adjuster? So the concept of low and high speed is all about how fast the suspension is moving, not how fast your bike is traveling. So things that are low speeds are typically you know, bodily movements, pushing down on the fork or the shock, uh, pumping through burns and rollers and that sort of thing. Anything that moves faster than your body can respond to entirely on its own uh, will typically be high speed. Landing jumps, uh, hitting bumps at you know, any, sizable, any sizable bump at speed, uh, things like that. So all of those sort of events will be mostly in the high speed area. And the interesting thing to note is that in order for your wheel or your suspension to go from zero velocity, you know, you're coasting on smooth ground, to a higher speed, it has to first pass through the low speeds. It can't just instantly jump from you know, zero velocity to two meters a second. It can't happen. So everything passes through the low speed on its way to the high speed area and then back. That is unchanging. Now, what that does mean is that while your high speed doesn't affect everything, your low speed does in some way have 
an effect on your high speed movements. Insofar as every motion of your wheel, vertical motion of your wheel, has to accelerate through the low speed region before it reaches the high speeds. So if we go to extremes, and I'm, I'm going to step back here and say, your low speed damping is not always a substantial enough fraction uh, or a substantial enough difference from your high speed damping that your low speed adjust will make a noticeable difference on really sizable hits or you know anything that's moving really fast. It will be so the shock will be such that you can't really tell the difference. But if we go to the point where we shut the low speed off entirely and have the high speed uh, circuit clamped closed with a certain amount of preload, it takes a certain amount of force. You need to build up a certain amount of force at the wheel acting on the suspension before the suspension begins to react at all. And so in order to build up that force, then you have a bump uh, or a, you know whatever hit the wheel is taking pushing through the tire a certain distance in order to build up that force, building up uh, that force through the flex of your wheel and everything in the system. And only once the force on the damper reaches that point does it open and your suspension move at all. As you can imagine, that creates a lag. And that's why excessive low speed damping uh, can feel quite harsh. And so that is one of the arguments against pedal platforms or anything along those lines. Um, particularly in terms of descending performance. And that's why we have shocks and forks with different modes so that you can flip from something that has a platform, you know, requires a certain amount of force to move it all, uh, to something that opens up much more freely and can respond a lot quicker. So that is essentially how your low speed can affect your high speed. Now let's talk about how your high speed damping can affect your low speed damping. So as I mentioned before, how much preload is applied to the high speed adjuster affects what force the high speed circuit opens at. Now, if we look at velocities that are still you know, relatively low, down here somewhere, you know, let's say around this range somewhere, how much preload you have on this affects at what speed this opens. But if this is the critical area that you're really looking for more support in, then increasing the high speed damping so that it holds the uh, high speed circuit closed for longer and forces oil through the low speed circuit for longer. Even if you decrease the low speed damping proportionally, it can actually give you more support. So what really needs to be understood about the high speed circuit and the high speed adjuster is that the more high speed damping you have, the more low speed damping you can get. You can't get any specific low speed damping. Um, Especially if the high speed circuit can open up and give a lot of flow area, like very low resistance. You can't get any specific amount of low speed damping that's separate to your high speed damping uh, or any specific low speed support with no high speed preload. You can't do it. However, that is not necessarily to say that this is desirable. I'm not commenting on what you want uh, in terms of the shape of your damp curve. A lot of people do. Uh, advocate linear damper curves in compression uh, for various reasons, we'll discuss that some other day. But if you want the low speed support, the high speed adjuster is actually what enables it. So at high speed setting that opens up at this force here, you have the ability to get you know, any amount of force that you like inside that square at any of those speeds. So without that much high speed preload applied, say you drop that down to here, then you can only get the maximum at any speed with the low speed adjuster of that much force. And that is why, that is how the high speed adjuster affects your low speed damping. All right, that's it for this week on the Tuesday Tune. Any comments, feedback, questions, uh, let us know in the comments as people usually do, and we'll uh, do what we can to address them. See you next week.